Hello, thanks for joining Strictly Money at the News Forum, where all voices matter. I'm Sejal Patel. If talking about money makes you squirm, you're not alone. Discussing money is still seen as a taboo amongst close family members and even among married couples. In fact, studies show that partners would much rather talk about death and sex before talking about money. And as you're about to find out, we pay the price for that silence in more ways than one. Joining me now with his advice on how to broach difficult money conversations is financial planner and financial psychologist, Dr. Brad Klontz. Brad, great to have you on the show today. Thank you, Sejal. You know, I've been running uh, my financial wellness business for more than four years, and, and I still find it fascinating that regardless of the fact that money is essential for all of us to survive, we live in a capitalistic world, we think about money a lot, so many people struggle to talk about it, and, and, and certainly in a healthy way. Why? What have you discovered? Shame and money seem to be really closely linked, and we are afraid that we're going to be judged by other people is really what it comes down to. Most of our life on earth as human beings has involved living in a closely affiliated tribe of like 100 to 150 people. And your connection to that tribe and how that tribe sees you, your status, how closely connected you are, if you have too much or too little, it creates a deep sense of shame. And so ultimately, we're worried that we're going to be judged harshly by our peers related to our finances. And shame is also um, about, you know, not having enough or not knowing enough as well, isn't it? Absolutely. So our status within a tribe was critical to our survival. And so the further we move out from the mean or the average within the tribe, the more like psychological anxiety that we experience, even, even if it sounds good, like having more money is a good thing. Like we think mm -hmm. it's a good thing. It creates a sense of anxiety. It really does come down to values, though, doesn't it, Brad? Because I always say, you know, um, money just it has no power until you attach values to it and, and manifest that. Would you would you say that's that's the right way to look at it? I think so, you know, because it, it's an inanimate object. It has nothing in and of itself, but all the stuff we project on it. And money is one of those weird things that it, 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 it um, it's all over our life, right? Mm -hmm. It integrates in everything in our life, like everything we do with our family, our activities, our jobs, our, our sense of meaning, like how do we achieve a sense of meaning in our life? Money is involved in all of it. So Brad, what is it costing us? You know, and, and how does this affect different people? So the American Psychological Association does a stress in America survey every year. And on most years, money is the top source of stress in the United States, I, like three out of four Americans. And Here too. ironically, yeah, we're like the richest country or arguably some of the wealthiest people on earth who've ever lived in on earth, right? But this is the biggest stressor above children, above family, above health. And stress obviously has a severe negative impact on our physical and emotional well-being. The hardest conversation, I think, is the one that we have with ourselves, is it not? Like, we have a lot of thoughts running through our head, and, and certainly you know, the people that I work with, you know, they say things like, I don't deserve money, or I, I'm not good at managing it. So what kind of advice would you give someone who's, who's thinking through those things? I think paying attention to those automatic thoughts we have about money are really, really important because we have done many studies at this point mm -hmm. and those beliefs that are just sort of popping into your head, you have to pay attention to those because they have a profound impact on your financial outcomes, on your emotions around money and how you deal in your relationships around money. Let's talk about money personalities um, because I always say, you know, everyone has a narrative. Chances are it was developed at a very young age. You've actually done a lot of research on this uh, and, and you call it money scripts. Um, can, you, can you talk us through why this is so important, the money narrative? Right. So we have experiences around money. We all have them based on our culture, based on our upbringing, our parents, our grandparents. And these experiences lead to a mindset around money. And this mindset around money, for most of us, it's outside of our conscious awareness because we don't really talk about money mm -hmm. much because we have shame around it, so we don't talk about it. But these beliefs that are lying around in our subconscious, they have a profound impact on how much money we make, on our net worth, on our credit card debt, and on all of our behaviors around money. So they actually are predicting, you are where you are right now financially because of these beliefs and these mindsets. And it starts at a very young age, doesn't it? 
you know, a lot of our beliefs around the, about the world, about relationships, about money are developed in childhood. And one of the challenges with that is that a child like mine can't see all these subtleties right. and, and all the context. And so we'll arrive at this belief around money, never really examine it. And it has a profound impact on our life. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll go through some of those personalities or scripts. 